guys and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Paulina. I got the gastric sleeve gastrectomy surgery on August 1st, 2019, and I am 142 pounds down. I'm about 10 months post-op, a little bit past 10 months post-op. In this specific video, I'm going to be giving 10 tips on how to stay hydrated post um surgery um, and we're gonna talk about how do you know if you're dehydrated after surgery why is it so easy to get dehydrated after surgery and what we can do to beat that so if you are interested then please keep on watching all right you guys so I'm just gonna get started with how do we know if we're dehydrated of course this looks different for everyone um, everyone is so different but these are some things that I that have happened to me or people that I that I know um, so of course a dry mouth becoming super lightheaded or dizzy eyes actually turning a little bit yellow, your tongue might be white, you're tired. Again, I'm not a doctor, but these are just things that have happened to me or people that I ha that I know um, have become dehydrated post-surgery. So I just wanted to share a little story. Um, after surgery, I actually had to go back to the hospital about a week later. So about a week later, I went for my post-op, my first week post-op um, appointment. Everything was fine. He moved me on from my liquid um, stage to the pureed stage. I went home and I was really, re really craving egg, a boiled egg. I ate the egg. I got super grossed out. I didn't throw up. I just became super nauseous and um, after surgery. Again, you guys, this is me. I know a lot of people that ate the boiled egg during the pureed stage and they were perfectly fine. I can eat egg now. I'm good to go. Um, but this is just my story. So I ate the egg. I got grossed out and it kept me from drinking my liquids. Um, my husband kept telling me drink your liquids, but I was so grossed out by everything that I did not drink my liquids. And guess what? Three days after that appointment, um, my husband says my, eye, my eyes looked really yellow. I was super lightheaded and my tongue was white. I went, I called my doctor, I went in and literally I was there for two minutes. He made me stick my tongue out. He looked at my eyes and said, I'm sorry, but you are dehydrated and you have to go back to the hospital right away. I went back to the hospital, hooked me up on IVs. Um, I was super dehydrated. It was three days of me not maintaining my liquids and not staying on top of my liquids. Yes, I was drinking a little bit. I was probably taking in, I don't even know, 10 ounces, maybe 15 ounces, which the goal then was like 60 ounces, which was hard, right? Um, um, so yeah, I had to end up going back to the hospital and I was there for five days. It was super frustrating. I don't recommend this. I mean, you can't. Yes, you can avoid becoming dehydrated. So what I'm saying is get your liquids in, okay? Um, I didn't think it could happen so fast. I was naive and I learned the hard way. So yeah, I was there for five days. My doctor did not let me go home. Every single day he came in to check up on me and, and to see how I was. And I stayed there for a good five days until I was able to leave, um, until he felt that I was, I was good to go. I wasn't dehydrated anymore and I was on my way. But... Um, what ended up happening was I ended up being on liquids for another four weeks. So I was on liquids for a good six weeks post-surgery. And I think that's why I lost so much weight that first month. I think it was close to 30 pounds that first month. Um, it was really, really hard, but I did not become dehydrated and I have not let myself become dehydrated since then. So that's just my story that happened um, right after surgery 10 months ago. Please, please, please know how important it is to stay on top of your liquids. It is not a joke. It is not something to take lightly. And um, I was blessed. I was able to be off work for a good three months. I know other people have to go to work right away. So just please make sure to get yourself prepped to stay on top of your liquids. So with that little story being said, I'm going to give you guys 10 tips on what I recommend and what helped me stay on top of my liquids. So number one, you guys, I would say get an app with a reminder. It is super annoying. Eventually you won't need it. I don't do it anymore now. But in the beginning, I did use an app. The, um, uh, what is it called? Veritastic? Veritastic? Oh, I don't know. I'll put the little picture right here. Um, that app isn't just for liquids. It's for your food. It's for your workouts. Um, it's bariatric friendly. So it's for people post-op. Um, and you can put on there how much water you drink. And I think that's where it was the timers. Um, but I had timers like every, I don't even know, every 30 minutes or something that it would go off. And I was like, oh, I forgot to drink my water. And I would log how much water I drink. 
since going back to the hospital, I was like, I am not letting that happen again. So you guys, get yourself an app. I'm sure there's so many different apps now just to remind you. And like I said, it's going to be annoying in the beginning because your alarm is going to be going off constantly, but then it's going to become a natural habit. Now, I literally drink, and yes, I'm drinking from a straw. I'll get to that. Um... I'm literally drinking all day long, especially now it is June. It's hot where I live. It's close to 100 degrees right now. Um, it's so easy to just get off track and then you're going to feel all those symptoms. So number one, get an app with your reminders. Number two, you guys, is get a fun water bottle. This, of course, is not like you have to, but with me and I know with a lot of other people, getting a fun water bottle, you know, there's so many different types. I have like 10,000 Starbucks cups. That's just, I collect them, okay? And I get some custom made. It's no way. Um, but it's super fun to get a bunch of different water bottles um there's some with the time on them i've seen like huge ones where it shows like 9 a.m you know 10 a.m 11 whatever so on and so on so it's helping you really 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 meet your water by just physically seeing it you know um i'm okay with the just a regular size i don't know how many ounces these are I think they're like 24 ounces. I'm fine with finishing it and filling it up, finishing it and filling it up and kind of keeping track. I don't log it and stuff anymore. I probably should, but I know that I'm eating my water intake. Um, I, you know, I'm, I probably fill that up five to six times a day. I know now I'm able to reach about a hundred ounces of water now, 10 months post-op. And um, before that, it was really, really hard. Uh, my goal, my doctor told me that 60 ounces was my goal. And now I do about a hundred a day. That's just what I've set for myself. And that's what has helped me like not become lightheaded. I've noticed even when I do 60 ounces, my body wants more, it craves more. So yeah, get some fun water bottles, get creative, glitter, Starbucks, whatever, whatever it is. And that leads me to straws just really quickly. That's not a tip. Um, I know doctors recommend for you not to use straws for a long time. Um, my doctor did let me around, I think it was around three months or four months, and he said it was fine. Um, I'm not like chugging it out of the straw. I'm very careful and I haven't had any problems, but please talk to your doctor. Every doctor is different. I know there's doctors that say no straws. Um, and I believe it's because it creates like gas bubbles or something like that. I don't, I don't even remember the reason, but just please, please ask your doctor. Number three is just studying your environment. So what I mean by that is once you go back to work, um, you know your workplace where is the refrigerator do they have a water fountain are you able to get water bottles out of your your vending machine study your area um i love cold water that's my thing so i always have to have ice i always have to have it in the fridge i notice that if i have my if like the ice melts i'll kind of i'll still drink it but i won't like be super excited to drink it and then i notice that i don't meet my water so that's another thing is just really studying your environment, not just at work, wherever you go, um, you have to know everything about it. Like set yourself up for success. Sorry, I keep stuttering. Set yourself up for success. If you don't, then you're going to fail. Work gets busy. Have it right on your desk. Um, you know, run really quick to go get your water and come back. There's really no excuses. I understand there's so many different types of uh, people work in so many different types of fields, but I really feel that it's possible. I know um, I was talking to one of my friends and she works at the hospital and she works 12 hour shifts and I know how hard it is for her, but she still meets it by drinking it before and after work and just trying during breaks and stuff. I know it's super, super hard, but it's so important for your health. Um, number four, you guys, is getting creative, adding crystal light, um, adding, there's so many different types of crystal lights out there. Not even just that brand. I've had like a Starburst brand where it's like the blue raspberry. That's the one that I have right here. I love blue raspberry. Mm. So they had like a strawberry, a pink one, um, orange, root beer. There's so many different types that you can add to your water, which will that always helps me meet my goal. For some reason, I only crave water by itself after a workout. Other than that, I'm like, oh, I need to add crystal light to it. Um, I'm super, I don't know. It's just, I, I'm always changing it. Like during the day, I change up um, the different crystal lights that I'm putting so that it really, really helps me meet my goal. 
Also, another thing with that same number four is adding fruit, adding cucumbers, adding watermelon, adding mint, adding lime, adding lemon, adding all of those things um, so that you can enjoy it. It's it's you want to enjoy it, especially in the summer, you know, um, and in the winter, you know, change it up with with teas, all that good stuff. So adding crystal like fruit, changing it up and getting creative with your hot teas hot teas count as a um your liquid it does it counts as your liquid number five um there's a lot of other things other than crystal light so again um doing your research and finding different things so like there's zero gatorades there's zero power aids there's a zero protein drink there's so many different types of drinks out there that are um zero calories and that's the most important part is that they are zero calories which leads me to the next one it's don't drink your calories ever you never want your eight ounce of water to be 150 calories of whatever, right? Even if you get, it makes a difference. If you get a red, regular Gatorade versus a zero Gatorade, you're drinking your calories. If you're getting a regular Powerade and a zero Powerade, you're drinking your calories. I don't even know how much they are, 120, 150, I have no idea. It's crazy though, and it's so easy to drink your calories and then you don't lose weight and then you're like, dude, I'm eating good, what did you drink? That's, it's, it's such a crazy thing. Number seven was you you are going to have to sip frequently. Sip all day long. It is a habit. I know it's so annoying. Trust me, I never did this before surgery ever, ever. Um, and it's something that I've just gotten used to. I always have my water when I'm driving, when I run to the store. If I know, if I think that I'm just going to go to Walgreens really quick to pick up some Premier, right? I still take my water because then I'll be like, hmm. I want to go to Ross after or whatever it is. And then it ends up being a 10 minute trip to a 30 to an hour minute, uh, an hour trip. And then guess what? I didn't drink for that whole hour, which will set me back. And I've done it before you guys. I have. So it's just always, always having that um, drink with you everywhere you go and sipping frequently all day long. Just take small sips. It's going to add up. We're not able to chug it. We're not able to be like, oh my gosh, I'm on my 10 minute break. Let me drink. 16 ounces we're not able to do that due to our stomach being so small we will throw up i know i have i'm sure there's people that can still after surgery but i'm just saying like that's what we're taught in our classes and i really really try to stay on top of what they taught me in my classes because i'm not risking my stomach to grow i'm not risking for me to get sick one time i drank water really really fast and guess what i threw up that was the only time that i've thrown up post-op one time in 10 months and it was because i drank my water too fast um, the next one is sugar-free popsicles count as your liquid. Go back to the stage, our liquid stage, right? Pre-op, post-op, sugar-free popsicles count. So on a hot day, you guys, again, sugar-free popsicle, I believe is 10 to 15 calories. Regular popsicle is like 100 or 80. I don't know. But look, look at the difference. The sugar-free versus the regular. It's super, super important and it counts as your, um, your liquid i don't remember how much one popsicle popsicle counts for i remember my doctor telling me when i was in the hospital because when i was in the hospital i ate so many popsicles um versus water because the water was grossing me out so yeah sugar-free popsicles count um for your liquids Another thing that I do, um, I work out from 5.30 to 6.30, Monday through Friday. So I get back at 6.30, I go straight to my kitchen and I make my aloe drink, um, Herbalife. So hit me up if you guys want to try it. It's the aloe drink with the collagen and the probiotic in about maybe 8 to 10 ounces of water. And I make sure to drink that before I drink anything, before I eat anything. And then after that, I fill it up again. Um, it takes me about, it's pretty fast now, about 15 minutes to drink. And then I add water. So as I'm getting ready for the day, I am drinking my water. Before my premiere, before I eat anything, I am drinking my water. It's super, super important to get... In our work day, we go to work and we get busy. So it's really important to try to get a lot, as many ounces of water as you can before your day because I know there's going to be time in your day where you can't reach for a water bottle and you're running around and doing whatever. But if you've already met, if you've already taken in 30 ounces, 
40 ounces in the morning, which is possible, right? Depending on how much time I wake up at, like I said, 5.30 and I, I get to work at 8.30. So I have a good three hours to try to get water in. Um, and I'm able to, and I get a large amount of water. So um, get your liquids in before work, before your shake, before that. Okay, it's super, super important. You don't want to play catch up. You don't want to make, you don't want to be like, oh my gosh, I've only drank 15 ounces and it's two o'clock. It's going to be so hard to meet it and you're probably going to feel super, super dizzy by that time already. So just really, really take that into consideration. Number 10, this kind of goes hand in hand with study your environment, but it's plan ahead. Plan ahead. Like I said, if you're going to the store, take your drink. If you're going to go on an hour drive, don't forget that water bottle. That's a whole hour without you drinking it. Take it. If not, you need to stop. Like, honestly, don't let anything be an excuse so that you don't meet your liquids. Um, if you go to a doctor's appointment, take it. You always need to have it. Um, it's super, super easy to forget it. And then you backtracked. You really did. Um, so always, always plan ahead. Know where you're going. Make sure that there is something for you to grab. Um, I always have Powerade and everything in my fridge. Um, and it's such a natural thing now, 10 months post-op. Before I didn't, I wouldn't drink anything. I didn't. Um, I would just drink soda and I would just drink water when I was thirsty, which was sometimes. Um, and now it's such a natural thing for me to go into my fridge and grab my Powerade. Or, you know, as soon as my water cup is, um, I drink it, I go immediately and fill it up. It's just a natural habit that I have now. And it's crazy. Um, so, yeah, it's just really, really, really planning ahead. Okay, just a couple reminders. Um, so, those were my 10. So, just a couple reminders, you guys. Just remember... Well, what my doctor recommended was um, to stop drinking 15 minutes before your meal and 30 minutes after your meal. Again, you guys, our stomach is what? They say 80 to 85% of your stomach is cut off. If you are drinking and eating at the same time, you're going to get full so much faster, which is going to limit the amount of nutrition from your food. We're only able to eat so much, right? Right now, still the most five ounces for me. I do not pass five ounces. I can probably eat more than five ounces, but I do not. Um, but that's why they don't want us to focus on liquids because then we'll only be able to eat so much. We already can't meet our nutrition goals with just our food. That's why we take our multivitamins, right? All that stuff. So don't drink 15 minutes before our meal and 15 minutes, I mean, and 30 minutes after. I know some doctors have the 30-30 rule. My doctor said 15-30. So that's kind of what I do and it really, really works. And even 10 months post-op, I stuck with it. So just keep that in mind. Um, another reminder, no carbonation. Obviously no soda. Get away from it. I was addicted. I would drink three to four sodas with my meal at a time. And I'm not being dramatic. You guys can ask anyone in my family. Three sodas easy big sodas with all my food it was such a bad habit for me and i did it ever for breakfast lunch and dinner it's insane to me you can drop the soda if i did it you can it was diet coke diet coke was my addiction i was so addicted to it it was insane i would wake up and drink a diet coke okay yeah um my doctor said carbonation can stretch the tummy i know some people say that it's a rumor but again i don't question what my doctor says that's what he told me that it can stretch my stomach so i am not risking it even like energy drinks that have carbonation there's even there's so many no nothing with carbonation i, I don't even try um the waters oh what is it called the water with the carbonation um i forgot I forgot, but you know what I mean, no carbonation. And then again, you guys, listen to your doctor on the ounces. So if at first it was 30 ounces and 60 ounces, and now I can eat, I mean, I can drink about 100 ounces. I know that the recommendation, I'm sure you guys have heard it, is um, drink half of your body weight in ounces. That is what helps you reach your water goals. So yeah, you guys, um, I know that was a lot, um, but dehydration is such a common thing post-surgery. Please keep in mind how important it is, you guys. Share your stories. Comment below. Tell me if I'm not the only one that has become dehydrated. What did you guys do? Tell me your tips because obviously I'm still learning and I'm still trying to, I'm always changing things up so that I don't get off track. But again, you guys, if you haven't yet, please subscribe. Please like this video. Please comment and share it with anyone that you think um, this video would be helpful for. And thank you guys so much for, uh, for your guys' support. I am over a thousand subscribers and I'm almost to my watch time. 
so that I can be monetized. So I am super, super excited and I am so thankful for all of you guys. And you guys have a beautiful Sunday and I will see you guys on my next video. Bye.